Guys, let's start out west. Let's start with Oregon and Utah. It was rocking in Salt Lake City from an early morning start at college game day. Pat McAfee was making like dozens of soaking jokes about uh, BYU, <laughs> and it was a fantastic atmosphere the whole day. Just a great Oregon, just- yeah, it, it was out of pocket the entire time. It was fantastic. <laughs> and if you don't know what that is, Google it, but have safe search on maybe. Um, <laughs> Oregon, for the game on the field, Oregon really came out firing hot and just immediately stated themselves as the better team. I think USC, this kind of proves that USC is kind of the cure for the common offense, right? Utah's offense has not looked very cohesive outside of the USC game last week. I think that says more about USC's defense than anything. And Oregon really proved that today. Oregon's defense set the tone. Their offense came out firing hot. And if you look at the total numbers, like you see on the screen right now, right? 390 total yards, 248 through the air, 142 on the ground. Not wowing you with the numbers on offense, but the score is certainly wowing you, right? Going into Salt Lake City, notoriously difficult place to play at altitude and Oregon just bullied the Utes up front on offense and defense. They got whatever they wanted in the running game. Most of the game just did whatever they wanted to do. So, and, and stat that Garrett pulled, this is a fantastic stat. This is the first time Utah hasn't scored a touchdown since 2018. Oregon looks like a very complete team guys. And I'm really interested to see, where they end up in the college football playoff rankings this week, because I saw a lot of chatter that maybe Washington and Oregon both deserve to be top four. I think Oregon's five or six at worst at this point, after this performance today, what stood out to you guys? What, what impressed you about the ducks in Salt Lake city? Yeah, I think you have to put them on the screen at the very least on this next playoff run. They got to be on the screen somewhere. If, if it's not one through six somewhere, then I think that's just disrespectful because to this point, Oregon, I think has looked the best in the majority of their wins. They don't really have any like super sloppy wins where you just felt like, you know, they were lucky to escape and survive. You know, they they haven't always been. They put up 81 earlier in the season. They put up 81 points. So, right. I mean, the borderline, you know, abuse of a a worse program. And then it's funny to see what they ended up doing later on to someone else's who cares school of the blind. They even put up like 90 something or whatever. It was crazy, but regardless, um, no, Oregon, look, they've looked really, really good. And I don't think that Oregon's defense gets nearly enough credit for what they're doing. They took what had just been kind of a breakout offense. We had talked, you know, all weeks, Yoni Baki, you know, he's the guy, he's, he's the two way guy. We're going to see him show up wasn't really a factor in this one. I mean, almost nobody for Utah was a factor in this one. Bryson Barnes, breakout day, doing it with the legs, being a hero, finding a way. He didn't do very much either. I mean, they didn't even rush for 100 yards in this game. And so, to me, when I look at this, Oregon's defense has to have a lot of credit. When you watch the game, they were just aggressive. They were setting the edges. They didn't let Utah get outside. And and they just did a really, really good job of playing good team defense. There's not necessarily one guy that's just – the absolute star, right? They have stars on their defense, but there's not one guy who's doing it and then everybody else, right? Like when I think Florida State, it's Jared Burris, right? He's the star. He's the superstar. He's going top five, top 10. And then there's all the rest of the defense who kind of plays around him, good team defense. Oregon has several solid pieces across this front. And I think that they're going to be a hard to beat team going out because they're starting to figure out, and I think they got their mindset back, right? They're they're starting to figure out how to play this game with that killer instinct. You saw it for minutes there, didn't really have it against Washington, kind of struggled to get it back, and now we see it again, right? We're seeing the killer instinct to get after it, you know, stomp on their throats, right? Do what you got to do. And and I I think if that mindset continues, this is going to be a really dangerous team that we have to talk about as a possible shot at the playoff. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And I, I don't know if somebody already mentioned it. Uh, I think somebody did. But just the overall arc of the game was just Oregon from the beginning, right? Just bullied them throughout the whole game. And if you want to look at fourth downs, right, Utah was forced into going for three times on fourth downs. They're forced into way more third downs than Oregon is. It just felt like they were kind of playing catch up the whole game. Um, Bryson Barnes, those two interceptions. Um, it, it was just a sloppy game for Utah. Um, obviously didn't score a touchdown like you mentioned earlier. And Bo Nix just seems to be kind of cruising. Um, very consistent game today. Two touchdowns, over 200 yards, look pretty good. Overall, like you said, I mean, Oregon is just a team that I think just has got to keep winning. Obviously, that loss to Washington on the road definitely hurts. 
Um, but a potential rematch we could see in the Pac-12 championship, and I know we'll get to that. But Oregon, I, I agree with you, Garrett. I know uh, a lot of people are, are kind of sleeping on them and, and maybe putting them behind a few teams that they shouldn't be behind. Despite the loss, I still think Oregon is undoubtedly a top six team in the country and should have a spot at the playoff, even with the one loss. And the Pac-12 playoff will play a, a or Pac-12 championship will play a big piece of whether or not they yeah. get in the playoff. Um, but Oregon, I, I've been notoriously high on Oregon all year. I, I still favor them and like them a little bit more than Washington, especially after the Arizona State game Washington played a couple weeks ago, um, the Stanford game they just got through with. So right now it just looks like Oregon's kind of dominating teams. They're keeping winning. Tough loss to Washington. Um, but I, I really do like Oregon. They're going to bump up in the rankings after uh, Oklahoma lost as well. So that should help them out a little bit. Totally agree. And I, you you took the words right out of my mouth, Drew. I These two teams, Oregon and Washington, it does seem like they're on a collision course for the Pac-12 championship. Obviously, a lot of stuff could happen. There's rivalry games still to be played. This is another conference that's log jammed at the top with a lot of really good teams. But – Oregon and Washington certainly seem to be moving in different directions after that game. Washington gets the big emotional win. And to Washington's credit, they've won the clunker games, right? They have figured out a way to win those difficult games on the road. But um, they certainly don't look as impressive as they did before the Oregon game. So I think, Drew, you kind of hinted at it. But if the game's played next week on a neutral field in Las Vegas, who would you guys take right now, Oregon or Washington? If I had to pick today... I'm going to pick uh, Oregon to win against Washington on a neutral field. I, I think it's hard to beat people twice. It's hard to you know beat the same team twice, especially if they're good. Um, and both these teams are really good. But, Trey, you're right. Washington's kind of been moving in the wrong direction since that game. They've kind of been moving away from being good. They've been moving away from being really solid. Penix has put up some questionable performances. And it looks like all that loss did for Oregon was kind of piss them off and get them ready. So, when I look at this, I think Oregon on a neutral field, I think their fans will travel a little bit better. It's not to you know disrespect the Washington fans. I just I think Oregon's a little bit of a bigger brand nationally. And if they were to play in the Pac-12 championship game, I'd pick Oregon, and I think that puts them solidly in the playoff. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna I'll agree with you. I, I definitely do want to. I'll pick Oregon here as well. Um, but Washington, from I, I guess a collegiate athlete standpoint, you're coming in and you're playing. One and five Arizona State, and then you're playing two and five Stanford. So, I, obviously, understandably so, you're not really getting up for that game like you are. Packed out house in Seattle, game days there, mm -hmm. big rival game against Oregon. The energy in that game was just a little bit different. You're playing Pac 12 at night, and the atmosphere is just not really the same at Stanford on the road at six o'clock at night as it is obviously at home in Seattle. So, I'll, I'll cut them a little bit of slack. I'll say it'll take Oregon because giving up 33 points to Stanford doesn't look too good giving up. Uh, uh, it was just a sloppy first half against Arizona state Penix through two interceptions. So I don't know. I, I'm going to roll with Oregon. I'm going to agree with you. Defense looks pretty good and they just stomped Utah. So it was hard not to pick them. Um, but Washington, definitely a team that feels like they have potential um, to win the games when they matter. Still have USC. They got USC next week and self Oregon state. So I guess we'll, uh, they'll run the test of time. Um, you know, we'll see how they play perform. I'm um, in big games before that Oregon game, but yeah, I, I'm going to agree with Garrett. I'm a roll with Oregon. I think that's a great point. I think it is okay to give 18 to 22 year olds a little bit of grace when their uh, competition level drops off just a little bit. It's easy to lose sure. focus. I'll pick with my heart. I'll say Washington still has the edge slightly. I just love Michael Penix Jr. and uh, just the whole offensive weapons that they have. It, it's going to be a fantastic game if that's does if that is what we end up getting in Las Vegas in December. Uh, Oregon's remaining schedule to close out November. They've got Cal at home next week before they uh, host USC. They go to Arizona State, which all of a sudden is a tricky game. Um, we'll talk more about that a little bit before closing out with the Civil War Platypus Cup, whatever you want to call it, on Black <laughs> Friday. Gracious, how about that? 